Yeah. Hello, and welcome to chemistry. Today we will be giving you a tutorial on the determination of the percent water in a compound and its empirical formula lab. This lab focuses on stoichiometry and its role in calculating empirical formulas. In this lab, we will be heating a hygroscopic ionic compound to determine the water of hydration in a copper chloride hydrate sample, conducting a reaction between copper chloride and solid aluminum in order to determine the mass and moles of copper and chlorine in the reaction, and calculating the empirical formula of the copper chloride compound. Before we start, let's review a little vocab and background. So first off, we need to know what water of hydration is. Water of hydration is the term allotted to trapped water molecules that cling to the structure of solid substances due to water's great polarity. Since water is a great solvent for ionic substances, it becomes an integral part of the crystal structure of the solid. When compounds have a tendency to absorb water vapor from the air, they are called hygroscopic. In this lab, we will be testing a hygroscopic ionic compound containing copper, chlorine, and water molecules locked in a crystal structure in order to determine its water of hydration. We will be gently heating the substance in order to remove the water of hydration. This way, if we measure the mass before and after heating, we can determine the amount of water in the sample and therefore the water of hydration. We will also be determining the empirical formula for the substance. Remember, an empirical formula is a chemical formula consisting of the whole number mole ratio, or in other words, the smallest subscript numbers for each component of the compound. The general formula for the compound we will be using is copper subscript X and chlorine subscript Y, ZH2O, where X, Y, and Z represent integers that will establish the chemical formula of the substance. In order to determine the mole ratios, we will need to determine the masses of copper, chloride, and the whole compound via a reaction between a solution of copper chloride and solid aluminum. First off, we need to gather the materials for our lab. And the materials that we need are going to be a crucible with a cover, um, unknown solid copper chloride, crucible tongs, uh, aluminum wire, 20 gauge, a spatula, Six molar hydrochloric acid, a ring stand, and clay triangle, and 95% ethanol solution, uh, the lab burner right here, and distilled water in the speaker, uh, which is a 50 mil beaker. Oh, sorry, no, it's a 200 mil beaker. And um, we also have the Buchner funnel and pistol flask, and a balance and filter paper to fit the Buchner funnel, a uh, glass stirring rod, and the heat lab and uh, the heat lamp and drying oven is in the other Okay, other so step room. one, measure and record the mass of a clean preheated crucible and cover. Then, obtain about one gram of the unknown copper chloride and hydrate and place it in the crucible. So first, you have to put your filter paper on top of the scale, zero it, and then start putting your copper chloride until you get one gram. Oh, exactly one. Then you're going to put it in the crucible. And make sure to break up any large pieces of the copper chloride in the crucible. And now measure the entire crucible with the copper chloride. and record that mass. Okay, now we need to set up the ring stand and the clay triangle for us to put the crucible on. So what you need to do is you need to get your ring stand and you need to unscrew it all the way so that it slides onto the, onto the pole and then screw it back until it's nice and secure so that it won't slide up or down. Then what you need to do is take your, your clay triangle and put it on the ring stand. Then you take your crucible and rest it just inside the clay triangle, just like that. Hold the burner in your hand and move the flame slowly back and forth underneath the crucible to gently heat the sample. Do not overheat the compound. Note the color change from blue-green to brownish as the water of hydration is driven out of the crystals. When the sample has turned brown, gently heat the crucible for two more minutes. Cover the crucible and allow the sample for cool for about 10 minutes. Mask the crucible, crucible lid, and cover. 
Dude. Reheat the crucible, crucible lid, and sample until constant mass is achieved, and then record the final mass. Once the sample has achieved constant mass, transfer the brown solid to a clean and empty 50 milliliter beaker. <laughs> then, rinse out the crucible with 8 milliliters of distilled water. And pour the water into the 50 milliliter beaker. Gently swirl the beaker to completely dissolve the solid. Note the color change of the solution is green as the copper ions are rehydrated. Okay. Now you need to measure out about 20 centimeters of aluminum wire and coil it so that it will fit in the beaker. So now you want to place the wire in the beaker and make sure it's completely immersed in the copper core solution. Note that the reaction will produce a gas. You can see that with the little bubbles in there. And you'll also see that some copper is forming on the aluminum wire. The reaction will take about 13 minutes to complete. When the reaction is done, complete. the solution will be colored, colorless. Most of the elemental copper will be on the aluminum wire. Add five drops of 6 molar hydrochloric acid to the solution to dissolve any insoluble aluminum salts in the mixture, which should make the solution clear. Use a glass stirring rod to scrape off as much copper as possible from the aluminum wire. And then, when you're done, uh, slide the wire up the wall of the beaker and out of the solution with the glass stirring rod. Then rinse off the any remaining copper with distilled water into the solution. If any of the copper refuses to wash off the aluminum wire, wash it with one or two drops of six molar hydrochloric acid solution. Put the aluminum wire aside, leaving the solid copper in the beaker. Oh, okay, this is where our lab deviates from the lab that you're given. So we don't have a little vacuum sealer thing, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna filter it plain and simple. So you just take your solution and you gently pour it onto the filter. And you need to get your little this, this, and you just want to get as much of the copper out as you can, because you want to filter out all of the water. Yeah, always as much as you can. Don't spill any, because it'll mess up your lab results, and that's bad. So I'm actually just going to add some distilled water in here, so that I can get the rest of this out. Pour it out and it should filter through. As you can see, the water is dripping down. All right. So then you just kind of want to swish it around a bit to get all the water out. So you want, on the top, you just want it to be the copper. You don't want any water. And we'll see you in a minute. the mass of a clean, dry wash glass. Transfer the copper to the wash glass and make sure that you have scraped all the copper onto the watch glass. So, there was a piece of filter paper in the funnel, or in the filter. So, we're going to take out the piece of filter paper and scrape all of the copper onto the watch glass. And now we put it in the oven to bake. After about five minutes, remove the wash glass from the oven. And when it's cool enough, measure the mass of the wash glass plus the copper. Then repeat this process until you achieve a constant mass. 